manufacture from the late 19th century, the early 20th century. And these were obviously buried at some time by the same family that still owns the land. This brought us into a, a, a nice discussion with the family, with the people who live on the farm, who see their history, even their most recent history, involved in the excavation. Maybe it was some kids that, had pl that were playing, he said, and knocked down the shelf, and then they were hiding the stuff. <laughs> That's a good theory. Got yeah. all the bottles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> Before mom gets home, you know, her favorite dish, <laughs> throw it in the trench up in the tomb. It's a project that sits right in the cultural and historical consciousness of this country. The soul, the character of, of, of the nation was found in the individuals who are in the sagas. The heroes, the villains, the women, the men, how they got together and, and how, how their lives ran. The Viking times and the heroes from the past have always been it cherished very much. Family saga, so-called, have been of um, immense importance to the Icelandic nation, especially during the fight for independence from the Danes. We're into the research, but we're also into giving something back. Whenever we, as archaeologists, dig a hole in the ground, somebody's going to be interested in what comes out. And I believe that's the case anywhere you dig a hole in the world. And I. I think it's important that, that we understand that, that we're not the only stakeholders. They're going to want to digest that material in their own way, present it in their own way, and, and use it for whatever, cultural tourism, for understanding the past, for, for identity, whatever. I think that the Icelandians have taken a lot of these stories, and they have a lot of trust in them, and I think that the Icelandians have taken a lot of these stories, er að koma fram um, í svona rannsóknum eins og, eins og er verið að gera á Hrísbrú núna eitthvað sem stiður þá við það sem að, að Íslendingu á sögurnar er að, er að segja og, 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 hérna, og að það svona, já, ég hugsa að ég hugsa að þetta svona styrki svona sjálfsmyndir að í, að okkar í, í þessu samingi. Fordleifa uppgröft sem þessi og viðsvöru landi, það styrkir rætur okkar vegna þess að það er verið að grafa upp það sem að við höfum við lesið um í sögunum og það sem að, að já, það styrkir sjálfsímin þjóðverjunar og allt það sem að liggur að baki í sögunum að, að þetta skuli finnast. Sko, Íslendingar eru náttúrulega Þetta er lítil þjóð, 300 og eitthvað þúsund manns, þykir nú ekki mikið í hinu, hinu alþjóðlega samengi en ég held að sko, flestir Íslendingar séu mjög stoltir að því og glaðir yfir því að vera Íslendingar og, og þeim þykir, hérna, þykir eh, flestum hverju mjög og hafa mikinn áhuga á, á sko, því sem hefur verið að gerast á, á, á Íslandi í gegnum aldirnar. Þetta styrkir sjálfsýmin þjóðarinnar og þessa sterku ákveðnu þjóð sem að getur lesið í landinu sínu söguna. Þetta er mikilvægt, þetta er jafn mikilvægt fyrir íslensku þjóðina og sjálfsýmind hennar eins og fornminjar á Gríklandi fyrir grísku þjóðin og söguna. Það er, það er akkurat það sama. I think I was only 11 or 12 when I finally realized that the people <clears throat> that my grandfather and grandmother and their friends were always talking about had died about a thousand years ago because uh, they were such a living part uh, of the community as people were referring to what they did and where they lived and what had happened to them and so on and so forth. So the sagas have that kind of similar role for us. As the place of Shakespeare or the Old Testament to have for the English uh, or for the Jews. So this is like when, um, when archaeology and, and in Iceland 
it does something very, you know, um, important. It comes into the dialogue of this. Is the saga true or is it untrue? Where does our identity lie? I'm very pleased with the, with the findings made by Jesse because they show, I think he's actually found bones that were probably taken up and moved in, into the church or close to the church probably from pagan burials and, and so on, so he, he confirms that. He confirms that there was a... a I'm not sure about the, the place under the altar, whether it was under the altar, but at least... Uh, and he confirms that there was a church there, but none of that, to my mind, um, uh, diminishes my belief in the fact that the whoever was writing that was making a point. The debate about the saga sort of, for me, hinges on sort of two related concepts also. The uh, the orality of the sagas and the historicity of the sagas. They're actually two different things and one depends on the other. So the historicity depends on them being oral. The same sort of farmers were living on the same sort of land, practicing the same sort of agriculture in basically the same sort of society. Whether the sagas have historical accuracy or not has been a debate that has gone on for almost a century Normally, it's a debate among scholars. My opinion is this, yes, no, forever, goes on. What we're trying to do is bring in archaeology into this, bring in a real material culture, 